thanks Professor Sun and Professor Liu a lot for organizing and inviting me to introduce our work entitled A Weekly Supervised Framework for COVID-19 Classification and Listen Localization from CHSCT. I'm Xin Gang Wang, equally contributed to this work with Dr. Jianbo Deng, Qing Fu, and Chang Zhou. The corresponding author of this paper is Dr. Chuan Sheng Zheng. We come from Department of Radiology Union Hospital and Institute of AI, School of EIC in Huazhong University of Science and Technology. At first, I would like to introduce the research background. This research was performed in February 2020 in Wuhan, which was the peak of COVID-19 outbreak period, according to WHO. This was a collaboration research between Department of Radiology and Institute of AI in Haas. In this background, we have to deal with two limitations. The first one is the limitation of allocation resources. In that period, radiologists were exhausted in front line with tremendous burden fighting with COVID-19. There are a few reasons. For each patient, multiple rounds of CT screening should be carried out. Allotating the distance is very time consuming, especially for small GGO. No more time making, makes the radiologists very tired. The second one is the limitation of computation resources. Our lab in the university was closed and we got only one GPU for developing the AI software. However, any missed case would continue to cause COVID-19 spread. So the accuracy of chess city is also very vital. As a result, the goal of this research is to develop a high-performance AI tool to detect COVID-19 from chest image under resource constraint settings. To address this problem, we propose uh, this weekly supervised framework. Given a CT volume and the patient level labels, for example, COVID positive and COVID negative. To simulate the process of pro prospective study, we used uh, 499 samples scanned before January 23 for training and validation, and 131 samples scanned after January 23 for testing. We use a UNET supervised by trend using the ground truth is obtained by an unsupervised method. We do not require much human allocation effort and it's kind of self-supervised learning. Then the segmented long masks are can calculate with CT image input into a 3D classification network terminated decode net for COVID-19 positive or negative prediction. Besides, we developed a weekly supervised listen localization module, which takes the advantage of both classification activation map and the variance in the long segmented map. Then, we're, then we will give the details of our method. So the first part is the unit for non-segmentation. As mentioned before, long mask for training was, were obtained via an unsupervised method. It is a connected component algorithm proposed in this TNN LS paper. This unsupervised method does not guarantee 
that all lung segmentation results are good. About 12% of the unsupervised lung segmentation results were not good, which requires to be removed from unit training set manually. Unit training and testing were performed for each slice in the CT uh, volume individually. The second part is the proposed DECOMNET. DECOM is sort for detection of uh, COVID-19. As shown in this figure, DECOMNET contains three parts. The first one is the steam part, which is a 3D convolutional operator with a, a large kernel. The second part contains two 3D residual blocks. The third part is the designed progressive classifier. We will prove the effectiveness, effectiveness of, the, of these settings. The input of the network is a CT scan together with this non-segmentation mask. So the input size is two times T times 224 times 336. 224 times 336 is the special size of CT emit, which is quite small for if, uh, because we want, uh, we want more size for efficient training and efficient testing. During the training of the net, we applied extensive data mutation to obtain more training data. The network is a pure 3D network, and it is a fully convolutional network. We use the residual network to enhance the reposition power in the network. And we use dropout in the classifier part to avoid overfitting. As you can see in the table, the classifier progressively abstracts the CT information. It contains three pooling layers. The fourth pooling layer is an adaptive pooling layer, which pulls the size, pulls the CT image or city feature in various size into a fixed size. For, exa for example, this is 128 times six. So no matter how, how large is the T and the output is only six, uh, 16. Okay, so uh, the second part is the a normal strategic mass pooling. And the third pooling part is a global mass pooling, which obtains a single one-dimensional feature vector for the inked CT image for classification. Okay, the last part is the weekly supervised listen localization part. Our idea of weekly supervised COVID-19 listen localization was to combine the activation region produced by the COVID-19 and the unsupervised non-segmentation method. As shown in this figure, in the red part, we inferred a few candidate non-regions from the COVID-19 by ap applying the class activation math in this CVPR paper. The decovenet activation region had a good recall, but they made many false positive predictions. In the last part, we extracted the potential COVID-19 Nissan regions from the unsupervised lung segmentation map. We calculated the variance, including the standard revision and the number of collected components in a seven by seven, seven window for each pixel in the feature map in the non segmentation mask. In the rest part, I introduced the in experiments, including some ablation studies. Experiments were performed on a single NVIDIA Titan, Titan XP GPU. It took about 
what uh, eleven hours for training and uh, training the unit and nine hours for training the decove net. It took only one point nine three seconds for testing, which included which include one point eight seconds for unit testing and zero point one three seconds for decove net inference. Decove net was trained for one hundred epochs using the atom of optimizer optimizer with a learning rate of one e uh, negative five. From this table, we can see that our algorithm obtained a good COVID nineteen classification accuracy higher than zero point nine when the probability threshold varied from zero point two to zero point we obtained a good negative prediction rate value of 0 0.933 using a very small classification threshold, uh, which is 0 0.1. Here are the precision recall curve and the ROC curve. In the precision recall curve, we obtained a very high PR AUC value of 0 0.975. In the ROC curve, there is a point with sensitivity and specific, uh, specificity values both higher than 0 0.9, which are good for clinical application. Sorry. This slide shows some ablation studies. We first compare our 3D decode net with a 2D classification net network, as shown in this figure. So the network of the 2D classification network uses pure 2D convolutions to extract features for each slice in CT. And the slice level features were aggregated into CT level feature for COVID-19 classification via a max pooling layer. For fail comparison, we keep the number of parameters and the number of network layers almost the same to our decode net. However, due to computations were not, not shared among different slides, its computing cost was much higher than our decode net. Evaluated by the slabs metric, it had 378.6 dflops, while our decode net only has 28.87 dflops. Our decode classification results was also better than the 2D classification network, 0 0.959 ROC AUC versus 0 0.9 ROC AUC. Since our decode net can capture the information among different slides, so we can get better uh, classification results. The results confirmed the effectiveness of utilizing 3D backbone for COVID-19 CT classification. Secondly, we performed an ablation study to verify the effectiveness of the dropout part in the progressive classback. The results show that the dropout operations provide 3.5% ROC AUC performance gain. We compared the proposed progressive class file with a fully collected class file, as shown in this figure. So usually fully collected class file is uh, widely applied in many, in many networks. So compared fully cl uh, collected class file use three collect fully collected layers for COVID-19 classification. Uh, according to the traditional classification network design method. 
The results show that our progressive clutch valve saves about three D flops computation cost and uh, provides 6.6% ROC AUC performance gain. To pr prove the effectiveness of our proposed method, we compare uh, our decode net with other method as shown in this table. So Grace, we first compare to some uh, histogram based method. The grayscale histogram feature inside the Upton non mask volume was provided for different class files. After ad adjusting the number of bins and parameters of each class file, the best results were kept. We proposed the, the proposed decode net surpassed the traditional methods by a large margin. A large margin, at least 10% in terms of accuracy. Also, we validated the effectiveness of UNET, though it is trained using the mask obtained via unsupervised method. UNET provides about 8% uh, uh, classification accuracy gain. So UNET is very important. Non-segmentation is very important. The last row shows the performance of a human expert. The expert had more than 15 years of experience in chess city. And the result was concluded by combining the patients other information, for example, the clinical symposium and the laboratory findings and the RT PCR, if available. Although RT covenant performed not better than human experts, but it was uh, still very promising to assist in improving the efficiency because uh, human expert takes about five minutes to. Uh, to check uh, to check each city and other information. The results of weekly supervised list localization are presented in this table. We look at the most confi we took the most confident three D list mask predicted by the proposed weekly supervised list localization algorithm. If the center of the predicted three D this mask was inside any of the allotated box uh, by the export. It is a successful hit. The CAN method only obtained a hit rate of 35.6%. The non-segmentation uh, activation obtained a hit rate of 55.7%. This is a very good hit, but the region discovered by the unsupervised uh, non-segmentation activation, uh, here it is the 3D CC, 3D correlated compilation, uh, com correlated component activation is too small, which is not meaningful to radiologists. By combining the CAM with the unsupervised 3D CC activation method, we obtained a hit rate of 68.5%, which was non trivial achievement since no Nissan allotations were used in our approach. We also explored a very recent weekly supervised deep learning method, uh, the norm grant method, published, published in CPR uh, 2020. The results of norm CAM were worse than CAM in this task. So this is the best result. Okay, here is the conclusion and discussion. In conclusion, we provide a fast and efficient way for developing COVID-19 CT image AI. By exporting city data and their patient level labels from the PAC system using the proposed very weakly supervised non-segmentation method 
and an efficient lightweight 3D classification network. And the weekly sulfide recent discovery method, we can obtain a high performance COVID-19 AI without costing much computing resources. Since the fine grain labels are expensive, weekly supervised learning is important for medical image analysis. Besides, we, I think automatic machine learning, AutoML, is also very promising. It can be combined with weekly supervised learning for effective AI tool for, for developing uh, effective AI tool in a very convenient way. There are also some limitations in our research. For example, no cross-center validation was performed and uh, there is no community acquired pneumonia CAP cases were tested. Here is the code of our uh, developer AI software uh, released on GitHub. You can scan this QR code to get the link. Finally, this is the acknowledgement part. Uh, we thank the founders and the reviewers, and many thanks for your attention. Thank you.